This video described the making of a bandsaw jig for producing Celtic rings, more commonly called Celtic knots. Utilizing this Celtic ring jig, you can easily and accurately produce Celtic ring and knot patterns on your bandsaw with perfectly aligned and tight fitting joints. The Celtic ring jig can be easily produced in a wood shop, equipped with some standard woodworking tools, including a table saw, routers, sanders, and basic woodworking hand tools. Two versions of the jig are described in this video, both based on the same table and fence design, just different ways of mounting on the bandsaw. Both versions of the jig are composed of a 15 to 18 inch flat plate table with a variable angle slot, and then a fence that can be adjusted both for the angle of the fence and the position of the wood to be cut. This first version of the Celtic ring jig has a miter bar mounted on the base of the table. And this miter bar slides in the miter bar slot on the bandsaw table. So it runs fairly smoothly and cleanly. A little bit of friction from all this surface being on the bandsaw table, but it does work quite smoothly. The only thing the system doesn't have, does not have a stop to prevent the bandsaw blade from cutting completely through the wood being cut and into the fence. So the operator must manually watch this and carefully stop it before it goes the whole way through the board being cut. When you're ready to cut your board, you first of all set your angle. In this case I'm setting it to 60 degrees. Lock it in place. And then I need to adjust where on the wood I'm going to make my cut. So I adjust that with this stop. Set that. Lock it in place. Finally I want to clamp the wood to the fence and against the stop. So in this case I'm using a little clamp to clamp the wood, pushing it tight against the stop, tight against the fence, lock it in position, and making sure that the clamp is clear of the path of the bandsaw blade. And now when I'm ready to cut, I'll go ahead and cut and stop the wood before it goes the whole way through. One thing more when I'm doing this, I would have my blade guide much lower, uh, so it's much safer. But for video purposes, I'm leaving it higher, but I would normally keep that way down as low as I can get it. In the second version, the jig table is mounted to the AccuSlice flat plate carriage with four roller bearings on its base. And each roller bearings ride on the rail on the AccuSlice system. And this provides for a smoother, cleaner cut. This version also incorporates a stop, which you can set to prevent the bandsaw blade from completely slicing through your wood and into the fence. The AccuSlice system is also used to accurately produce the wood insert pieces used to fit into the cuts you made in the wood. These wood inserts can be accurately cut to the exact thickness you need and do not require any additional sanding to get them to the correct thickness to fit into your bandsaw blade cut. To use this version, you first of all slide the jig onto the AccuSlice rails, adjust the angle of the cut, Adjust the position where you want to cut your wood, and then next you would actually set your stop so that the blade doesn't go the whole way through into your fence. I usually use a, a piece of hundred thousandths inch thick wood here, adjust my blade so it just touches that, and then set my stop. And then once I set that, my blade will not go into the fence. I would next attach my wood and then clamp it in position. I can, I can either clamp it with the same clamp I used previously, or in this case, I have attached some clamps to the system. I can use these clamps to, again, push the wood against everything to hold it in place, adjust the clamps with these small blocks of wood, and making sure everything clears the bandsaw blade path.
Utilizing these jigs, it's possible to produce accurate Celtic ring patterns from simple one or two ring patterns to more complex patterns with 20 or more rings. At the end of this video, I will have a gallery of some of these simple and some of the complex Celtic ring patterns that I have created with this jig. I'm also planning some additional videos on demonstrating how to make some of these complex ring patterns and then incorporating them into some of my projects. If you don't have the equipment or time to make your own Celtic ring jig, a commercial product is under development. This Celtic ring jig that I'll be making can be used with a miter bar to write in the miter bar slot on your bandsaw, such as in this version. And it can be used with the Yankee Slice flat plate carriage, such as in this version. I'll be describing both design options, but the main unit I'll be making will be for the AccuSlice system. My preference is to use the AccuSlice because it produces smoother, cleaner cuts, and also you can use a stop to prevent the bandsaw from cutting the whole way through your board. Also, you need the AccuSlice to produce the thin wood spacers used to fill the slots in your wood. The AccuSlice permits the cutting of these spacers to an accuracy of plus or minus two thousandths of an inch which means you'll get nice tight-fitting joints in your finished project. This is a prototype of the Celtic Ring Jig. The Celtic Ring Jig will consist of two main components. A main table with mounting holes for either the miter bar or the AccuSlice flat plate carriage, and a curved slot for adjusting the angle of the fence. The fence has two holes. One is the pivot point, and a second hole is for the carriage bolt which will slide in the curved slot to adjust the angle of the fence. And there's an adjustable stop for positioning the wood block to be slotted. I begin the construction of the Celtic ring jig by designing the main board layout in a computer program called SketchUp. You can download the SketchUp file as well as these PDF drawings for this project from the AccuSlice literature tab on our website. This new version of the Celtic ring jig will incorporate a few changes over my previous prototype version for greater flexibility. First of all, I increased the table size from 15 inches to 18 inches to enable me to cut some larger wood blocks. I increased the angle that I can cut all the way from 90 degrees all the way up to 30 degrees. However, I suspect I only be using a range from maybe 70 degrees to 45 degrees for most of my projects. Next, I increased the height of the fence from 2 inches to 3 inches tall and I moved the pivot point closer to the bandsaw blade. From the computer printout, I transferred the data to my main board. This main board is a piece of MDF, 18 inches square by 3 quarter inch thick. This angle slot will be a quarter inch wide on the top surface of the board and it'll have a counter slot half inch wide by 3 16th inch on the bottom of the board. This will allow for the carriage bolt to slide in the slot and lock the jig fence to the selected angle. First I'll drill these four holes, quarter inch diameter holes, and I'll also countersink these holes for the AccuSlice flat plate carriage. Then I'll also drill this quarter inch diameter hole for the pivot point for my fence. After that, I'll use a router to cut my angle slots. Okay, I just drilled these five quarter inch diameter holes on the drill press. I did do them on the drill press because I want to make sure that they were perfectly aligned with my uh, marks on the board and also perfectly perpendicular to the board surface. I also countersunk these four holes and that's for my screws uh, for mounting on my AccuSlice carriage and I want those screws to be flush and not protruding above the surface of the board. Now I have my pivot point, and what I'll be doing here, I have a jig I made for my router, which will go in here, and I'll be able to route this curved slot for my angle adjustment, and I'll be doing that next. So this is my router jig. I didn't have a, an actual circle cutter for my router, so I made one out of some stuff I had laying around the shop, uh, but it works. And it's not working on my pivot point, and I'll just go, I'll actually do multiple passes at different depths, and then I'll reverse it over and do the back side to get the, uh, the countersink. OK, 
Okay, I just turned the board over, changed my bit from a quarter inch to a half inch router bit, and now I'll uh, route the countersink on the back side. One thing more to do to this table. Since our bandsaw blade cut's going to be here, this side is going to be supported on the uh, AccuSlice carriage, but this side is free floating and it's kind of weak. So, what I did in my prototype is I actually put two boards, like one about a half an inch away from the blade, one out here, and that supports, that supports this table in. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two of those, but I'm going to route them in slightly, just maybe a an eighth of an inch route in here, uh, so that's something to get align it and give it a little more strength. I'll do that on a table router. In my prototype, I use some MDF, which is a little heavy, a little overkill. So for this one, I just use some, uh, some plywood, half-inch plywood, and I'll put those in there like that. I won't put these in until later. I want to get the exact height to clear the table. So I'll probably take a little bit off this, and then I'll glue them and, and nail them in place. But that'll give me the support on this end of the table. So that completes the table, and next we have to, uh, to do the fence. This is a fence. I actually laminated two pieces of cherry here. So I have an inch and a half wide by three inches high. And I have to do two things. Number one, I got to drill two holes. This hole is six inches in, which matches up the, uh, the table. And then this hole will be for the uh, carriage bolt, which will slide in that slot we drilled. And then one thing more, I want to route into the board here to fit this piece of channel. And then that will slide this stop, and that's where I can adjust the length of the wood I want to be cutting. So I begin first of all by let's drill those two holes and get that to match up with the plate. So there's the uh, fence in place. And the next thing is to wrap this channel. Okay, we're back in the router, and I'm all set up to route this front side. the fence and I just made my stop jig, drill a hole in this angle iron and that goes in there like this. So I have my stop. So the next thing to do is to mount it onto the Accu slice or if you're mounting it on a for the miter bar you put a miter bar in its place underneath and it's ready to go. I'm going to make one additional change to this Celtic ring jig. In cutting pieces on the bandsaw, it's very important that the wood doesn't move while it's being cut. Typically, I use a C-clamp or a small uh, clamp to clamp the wood to the fence so it doesn't move while it's being cut. But I decided I'm going to actually insert a piece of this T-channel into the top of the fence. I'll actually route it in the top of the fence here. And then I can add clamps such as, such as this clamp or a clamp such as this. And this will actually clamp the wood down, push it against the table so it won't move while it's being cut. It'll give you more accurate cuts on your uh, rings as you're cutting them. So 
So the slot for this T channel has been routed in the top of the fence and the only thing left to do is to insert some number six by three quarter inch screws and then drill the holes through for my two quarter inch bolts to go through the fence. I had to drill those, drill those through the aluminum channel. This is the finished jig. I added two of these rockler clamps and if you're cutting a large piece of wood such as this a little over three inch square piece of cherry I would first of all push the block in against my stop against the fence and lock it in close to the stop here and to the side of the bandsaw blade curve and the other clamp you can put out here and that holds the wood perfectly flat against the table against the fence and it won't move when you're cutting if you're doing a smaller piece of wood obviously these clamps won't reach that piece of wood a piece such as this I just made some rectangular blocks I can put one here again pushing the wood against the stop against the fence and then locking it down with a screw clamp and doing the same thing over here Again, that wood's not going to be moved. It's going to be perfectly aligned, flat against the board. So every cut will be exactly the same. And now we're ready to install this on the AccuSlice flat plate carriage. Next I will mark the angles of the cuts on the table using a digital protractor which has an accuracy of 0.1 degrees. This will be f for future reference when I'm cutting my boards. I'm inserting some 45 thousandths inch thick pieces of wood in the bandsaw blade cut that I made in the table to mark this straight edge. Then I'm measuring the angle between the bandsaw blade cut and the fence. I'm marking the angles in 5 degree increments from 90 degrees down to 35 degrees. We're now ready to cut some slots in a piece of walnut to uh, make our Celtic ring pattern. So I begin first of all by selecting my angle and for this project I'm going to use 45 degrees. So I set it to 45 and then lock it in place. The next thing I want to do is I want to set my position so that the blade doesn't go completely through my wood and into my fence. So I have a piece of wood here which is 100,000 inch thick which I find to be a good thickness uh, remaining on my board. So I place this wood in the blade path, 
press the blade up against it, and then adjust my stop to hold that position. And then once I remove that piece of wood, that blade goes 100,000 inches from going completely through the board. And so that's set. Next thing I need, need to do is set where on the board I want to cut my angle. I can cut it up at the top, in the middle, or in the bottom. I select that position, and then I can adjust exactly where I want it to cut. Lock that in position. Next I want to clamp the wood either to the table or to the fence. And I can either use a clamp such as this, which was done in the past, uh, just making sure that the path of the uh, clamp is free of the blade path. However, my preference now is to use these clamps, and clamps don't quite reach the board, so I have these little spacers. So I'm pushing the wood against the stop, against the fence, and then I'll lock it in position with the clamp. And then I'll put another one up here on this end, just to support the other end of the wood being cut. Just making sure that they're always out of the path of the blade. And that locks it in position, and that board should not move, it should be perfect when you're ready to cut. Then we're ready to cut. Uh, everything's in position. My angle's been set, my position and the cut's been set, blade not going through the board's been set, and we're just ready to cut. Last thing I want to do is, I want my bar down, as, as low as possible, reasonable. Uh, just to keep your fingers away from that blade. And always keep your fingers back here, never up here. Because that's, if you're cutting a piece of wood at an angle, it can be fairly dangerous. So you want to keep your fingers behind the fence whenever possible. My blade in this case is a, a, a 14 teeth per inch Timberwolf blade, half inch wide. Uh, the 14 teeth per inch, going to, doing a cross cut, gives me a nice smooth cut. Using the AccuSlice system, I've cut some thin slices of uh, maple. These uh, slices are exactly 40 thousandths of an inch thick, which is exactly the kerf of my saw blade. And this goes in here like this, and I get a perfect tight-fitting joint. And that piece will be glued, inserted, clamped for maybe uh, 10 to 20 minutes, and then sand it smooth. Board will be turned 90 degrees, repeat the cut, repeat that, another 90 degrees, and then a fourth 90 degrees. And when you're all done, it looks like this. And those joints, if you look at are perfect. And this will produce a nice Celtic ring pattern when it's done. There will be a follow-up video coming shortly to describe how we make some of these more complex Celtic patterns. Using this jig and its versatility, there's an unlimited variety of patterns you can create with this system to produce accurate Celtic ring patterns. Everything from simple two ring patterns to very complex patterns with you know, 20 or even up 24 rings I've used in some cases.